was your sister who initially brought up the idea of making a cover, which started this whole process for you. Do you remember what you felt in that moment that you realized this was the career path that you wanted to take? I was eight years old, so I don't I don't remember the exact <laughs> moment, but I do I do remember I do remember the moment where I was like, okay, we're gonna take this to the next level. I was probably like ten, maybe eleven. Um, I remember I was in my kitchen. And my dad was like, basically, what are you guys doing? Take it to the next level or don't. Mm -hmm. But like, you've now been doing this for a couple of years. We pulled our money together. Um, we got a, a Nutella brand deal. And that was enough money for us to go buy a, a camera. Um, so we bought, it was actually a really nice camera. Uh, we still have it. And still use it for all the videos. Sorry, tangent. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was the moment. And I remember, I remember this other moment where I kind of like saw it all in my head. I was like, I know what to do. And I didn't, but um, there were, there were a couple kind of defining moments. And uh, one of them was, it was in the kitchen. There, there's been so much growth in your artistry over the years. What's playing the biggest development uh, in your, your growth as an artist and a songwriter? Probably the debut album was kind of the single biggest challenge that that I had ever faced that was yeah because it was like I remember at the beginning of the album cycle I was like okay like let's go like I have my concept I have my whatever um this is gonna be like my DNA I know exactly what to say and then three months later I was like holy shit I have no idea what to do this is so scary I have like one song and I need however many so much self-doubt and then we kind of got through that I talked it up with Darian and uh, just kept pushing on, which is really all we could do. But I did something that I never thought I'd be able to do. Um, and I like music. So yeah, that was, that was a big win. And that for sure helped in the in the process of the, of the ride and everything that we've done this year, um, which has been hard as well. You just released part two, and there's so much vulnerability in all of your music, but particularly this body of work. How much does knowing the impact that your your music is having on fans fuel you to continue to be so open? How easy is it for you to tap into that vulnerability in a writing session? It's it's very important. I think coping was probably which is off the the album is probably the song that really solidified it for me. Like when I'm in the studio. I'm thinking about the live show. I'm also thinking about how people are going to respond to this. And it's for sure important. I think I'm I'm more so thinking about the live show, to be honest. It, mm -hmm. It's more it's more fuel. Um, thinking about reactions, but the live show is like, what do I want this to feel like? And that's that's the question that I ask myself most. What is that process like for you when you're going into a writing session? Do you know like how many songs you want to write? What that vibe is, and how's that changed over time for you? It's usually just one. Uh, we have a pretty long process. I, I like leaving the day with something that's like at least half complete. Um, I don't expect a great mix, but like a decent one. And the production shouldn't be completely finished, but it should be mostly there. Um, so we usually end up just doing one thing. And I'm not a freestyle writer at all. Not with words anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like the best practice in a writing session, for me at least, um, is just to kind of let it happen, let things come at you. Um, there's a lot of people that talk about creativity as like a force um, mm. thing that like flows through you. And I, I do agree to a point like you can't you can't sometimes we go into a writing session, we get absolutely nothing. And that's that's fine. It was just a fun hangout and maybe you learn something. Or maybe you really like the producer and you'll and you'll go again. But but you kind of just have to let things flow through you. Of all the music that you've released thus far, if you had to pick one song that best encompasses who you are as an artist, which would it be and why? Mm. Um Party for Two. I don't know if that's true. I just like that song. <laughs> that that song is is a vibe that I've been trying to make for I don't even know how long years years I've been trying to write that song and it's kind of a weird thing to say because like just go write it but that session was a perfect 
storm of like it was just me and Darian writing Soren as well um but there was no like there was nobody there just to be a writer which often changes things pushes it there's just another influence um and Soren is the coolest guy ever so Darian and I were like the the pop influences in the room and really just Darian because I was like I don't want to make pop today I want to make whatever um so I just think it's a really a really cool really cool song and having been on this journey now for a decade, what's been the most surprising part? And is there a moment in particular that stands out to you? All of it, to be honest. <laughs> everything, everything, every mainstream success that I've ever had is a complete and utter shock. Um, and it, like, obviously, we've done the work to get there. I say a lot that Darian and I have just kind of like brute forced it. Like, we've been doing this for 12 mm. years. Yeah. And, uh, so many people just blow up overnight or, or blow up in a year and that was not the case for us so we've learned a lot along the way um but i don't know it's still all weird like the first arena show that i ever did walking onto that stage was oh my god the scariest moment of my life i was out of breath for like 10 minutes but also i did a meeting with uh apple music and there was like a couple of big like u.s executives i did that meeting and i was just as scared as when i did my first universe uh, my first um um whatever arena show so i don't know anything where, where i'm like on a big stage where i'm being recognized largely is so scary to me and it's all weird even the toronto show that i just did it it like felt huge and all my family and all my friends and all my label uh people were there and it was Brian was there um, and it was awesome. I was so excited, but I was so scared. I had this imposter syndrome that I never really get. Mm. Um, I was like, can I fucking do this? Um, I don't know, one foot forward. Is it more satisfying knowing how much work you've put into it and just seeing the, the reaction from the fans and uh, how much your music ha has been to them? No. Well, the second part, yes, but the first part, no. I could have blown up yesterday and i would still love and appreciate um the people who got me there equally um there there are deeper bonds for sure like there's there's people that i've watched grow up which is really fucking cool mm -hmm. um, and like like we were both 13 at one time and now you're going to you're going to school um people have written about me in like their college oh my god i'm gonna fucking cry this girl sent me her college entrance essay one time um she's named Layla. And uh, oh my god, it was it was like such a full circle moment for me. Like I, she'd come to every show since mm. we were like 14, 15 or something, and now going to school. And it was just so so crazy. So uh, uh, yeah, I guess the answer is yes. Then. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're speaking of tour, you're getting ready for the Asian leg of the ride. How much do you use the stage to test out your new material? Oh, it's kind of like the final test. Because mm. uh, if it, and there's some songs that, that are so much better live, like when I'm gone, I like that song a lot, but the live show, the live version of that song, I don't know if it's the arrangement, I don't know what it is, but it hits so hard. It's so fun every night. Um, it's nowhere near the biggest song, not even a song that I was expecting to 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 be anything special on stage, but so awesome. And then like Leave the Light On, for example, is not as fun to perform, um, even though it's a song that people love more than When I'm Gone. Um, and it's like very poppy and, and stuff like that, which usually, but it is still fun, but it's just less fun than I thought it was going to be. I know, you, I know that you just released the right part too. Have you started writing the next body of work? What can fans expect from you for, in 2024? We never really stop writing. Every time yeah. we're in LA, we are always writing or just alone. Um, there's, I go through like these little phases where all I can think about, all I can do for like two months straight is write. And the last time that happened was earlier this year, like at the beginning of the year. Every time I, it's every winter. Now that I think about it, um, hmm. okay. Well, I'm about to start writing a bunch <laughs> after uh, after we get back to me. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, but we the answer is yes. We we've been been writing. I was starting to kind of get a handle on on what I want it to look like. Um, and then we just like to end all of our interviews with a, a pop culture speed round. Is there a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? Oh shit. Oh, this is supposed to be a speed round. See, I'm never good at these. Never have been. In all my years of doing interviews, they say speed and I immediately <laughs> love it. Take your time, take your time. Um, I'd say like rap stuff, but that's not really mm. a surprise at this point. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff. There's some Deftones, I guess, but everybody's kind of going back and listening to that older stuff. Um, I don't know. Goodness me, I listen to everything. Quite literally everything, and I will listen to everything. What What about the uh, first album you ever bought or streamed? Oh, twenty fourteen Forest Hills Drive by J Cole. What about that? Uh, Every word to that album. <laughs> what about the uh, first concert you ever attended? Taylor Swift. I think it was Red Tour, or maybe nineteen eighty nine. I don't know, but I left that venue a Taylor Swift fan. I did. Yeah. I did. Just incredible live. What about a, an album that changed your life and why? Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Um, and why? It was, I listened to it on repeat every night. Like I, I would listen to it once through before I went to bed every night uh, right after my breakup. And it helped me. It made me think of music in a different way and think of, because I was trying to figure out like how the fuck did they produce this? Like, I don't, I've never heard that sound before, which is something that you don't really get a lot. Like everything is like a rim, a snare, a tom, uh, a cymbal, a piano, a fucking organ. Like we know the names of all these things. Like you, you go into a Mellotron, you get a little crazier, you go and do some synth stuff and you get a little crazier, but more or less everything is in the, everything is in the realm of what you've heard before except for dark side. Um, and it came out 50 years ago. Um, it's just such an incredible album. One of the, one of the best guitar solos yeah. of all time. Great King in the Sky. That's probably my favorite song. I love that song. The emotion in that voice, just so many weird choices that people shouldn't have been making in, in the seventies. Um, yeah, sorry. Long drawn out answer. Yeah. But that's the time. What, and we were talking about Toy earlier. But is there a venue that's on your bucket list to still perform at? Massey. Massey Hall in Toronto. And then final question for you. When you're on the road, what's a must-have? My own pillow. 